I'm currently travelling on a real-life operating railway line on a real-life battery electric train, the UK's first battery electric train, in fact. But technology like this doesn't happen overnight. It is not simply a case of chucking a battery on a train and hoping for the best. No way. So, in this episode, we want to take you on a journey to show how this train came into fruition. And to do that, we need to travel back to March 2023, when this project was a little less shiny. There are in fact already electric trains in the UK, which are powered by overhead lines. However, as soon as you have tunnels or branch lines, these quickly become a really expensive option. And that's where battery electric trains could be a great alternative. But if you are going to go for battery electric trains, how on earth do you charge them? And behind me here is what the GWR battery team have come up with. Now, don't be deceived, it might look a little underwhelming, but actually this is pretty remarkable. So, David, we're stood in front of this. What am I, what am I looking at? Well, this is um, a key constituent part of the charging system for the battery train that we've developed. We call it the shoe gear. Um, it's the interface between the charging system that is ground-based, infrastructure-based, and the batteries on the train. So this would be on the train, and this is how it connects it to the charging mechanism. That's right, yeah. So for those people who are familiar, perhaps, with um, a third rail train like operates out in the south of London. Um, they have a thing called third rail, which is the electrification system. And a, a shoe runs along the rail uh, constantly. This is similar, but different. So these shoes connect with a set of charging rails uh, on the track, but they only come down and connect with those rails when needed. Okay, so walk me through how this actually works. I'm going to start with, it's on the bottom of the train, it approaches the station, and then what happens? In order to charge a battery train in a short space of time, you need a, a large reservoir of energy, and we call that the trackside battery bank. So essentially it's a shipping container um, full of batteries, um, which is trickle charged uh, when there's no trains around. And when the train arrives, um, these shoes come down, connect with some rails in the, on the track. The train is then charged rapidly through these, through these shoes here. It's up to about a thousand amps will flow through this through each of these shoes. One's positive, one's negative. And um, it's as simple as that, really. So behind me here is the shoe gear that the team have been developing. Now, what it's doing is testing how the train can come into the station, deploy the shoes, attach the charging rails, and charge at a station. Now, they're going forwards and backwards and have done over 20,000 times to show that this is really robust and can sustain the whole lifetime of the train. They've done it in all sorts of weather conditions, ice, leaves, snow, you name it. And today, we're seeing how it operates in the rain. And do passengers have anything to worry about from a safety perspective? You know, there's a huge amount of current going through mm. the rails, for example. So the, the way it works, I say that the charging rails are not live when there's no train around. There's several levels of interlocking before those charge rails become live. So train comes along, first of all, um, the system has to recognise it's the right train, that the shoes have come down, that the shoes have made contact with the rails, that it's ready to receive charge, so the train itself controls the charge rate, um, the batteries on the train control that. And there's several sort of positional interlocks as well, so it has to make sure that the train is stopped in the right place. So the shoes on the rig will be attached to the bottom of a the train. They can be retrofitted to existing trains or can go on to obviously brand new trains as well. And we're going to be back here in a couple of months time to see this fully battery electric train operating out in the real world. The next stop was not quite the real world, but instead a special train testing centre for the next round of validation. It's been six months since we last saw the GWR team in Southam and we've come down the road to the Long Marston Rail Innovation Centre. Sadly, the weather hasn't changed much, but I'm hoping that the technology has. So Julian, last time we were here, we were seeing the shoe gear and the test that you're doing on the shoe gear in Southam. And now they're on a train and the train is on the tracks. So what's happened to get us to this point? Well, the train was, uh, it was always built to be able to take a fast charge. So it had batteries on and we drove it at the COP26 conference in November 21. And it was really a matter of proving that the shoe gear was mechanically sound, proving it electrically worked on a rig, and then putting it all together as a package on the train and testing it here. And that's what we're here doing now. And what's the purpose of these tests? Sort of what are you testing each time and what are you hoping to prove? Um, these are, these are tests in readiness for taking the train to West Ealing. So we're testing the fast charging system, we're commissioning it and doing all the sort of troubleshooting that you would do 
with any brand new system, you've, you've got to shake it down and, and get all the niggles out. And we are testing at the, the same current that will be put into it when it's in passenger service. So it's essentially basically just a kind of pretend run of what will be the sort of real situation in a few months' time. It absolutely is, yes. So funnily enough, the, the charging rails themselves are the ones that were going to go to West Ealing. We just sort of moved the spares around to use those. The charging containers that we use to charge the system, they are the West Ealing containers. They've been proved here and then we'll take them down and, and start them again there. So last time we visited the team, we were looking at the deploying of the shoe gear, and that's the mechanism that connects the charge rails to charging the batteries on the train. And now we're seeing all of those bits and pieces come together. So we've got around 500 kilowatt hours of batteries on the train, the shoe gears are ready to deploy, and ahead of me, I can see the charging rails. Now this train is capable of charging up to two megawatts, and it's absolutely enormous. And it's being charged from a big box of batteries, which has about half a megawatt hour in. And, you know, you can scale that up because it's just literally a box of batteries. So in West Ealing, I think we probably expect to see a whole megawatt hour of batteries. And they are being trickle charged. They could be trickle charged by solar power. Imagine if you had a full canopy of um, solar panels in a car park or obviously with an upgraded connection to the grid. Now that's being trickle charged and then delivering a whole pile of power to the train such that we're not having to impact the timetable of the trains because that timetable is absolutely sacred. And so all of the charging times are such that you only have to spend three minutes at a station, which is exactly what you'd expect to see now. And so when you think about that trickle charging process, it's a bit like imagining filling up a bathtub with just a dripping tap and then releasing an enormous plug hole to get as much power onto the train as possible. And that's really all there is to it. And I'm currently sat in the driver's seat and nothing has to change for the driver apart from one button which says fast charge indicator. But other than that, the display is exactly the same as you would expect in any other train, including this. I'm sure many people will say, well, surely there's just an absolute ton of batteries on, on board and that's going to impact the weight or maybe even the space. How has it impacted the design? Because this one here is sort of a retrofitted design. That's absolutely right. Yes, yes. So this, this train's a Class 230, which rail enthusiasts know all about. Um, and that features three what we call battery rafts. And in EV, that's called a pack. And uh, each one of those is around 84 kilowatt hours. And so all in all, the train has got uh, six of those, three at the front, three at the back and that gives you around 500 kilowatt hours of, of energy on your train. Which isn't masses, really. No, it's not, no. And, and I guess that's, that's something that rail takes full advantage of, that the rolling resistance is so very, very low. Obviously, the trains are quite big and heavy and you have to accelerate them to the speed you've got to get to. But, but once you're there, they just roll because it's a metal wheel on the metal rail. What we've seen here today at Longmaston is very much a technology demonstrator where the team can find out all of the little niggles that need to be fixed before it gets tested in the real world. So we are, of course, going to be back, hopefully in a few months' time, to see it in action at West Ealing. Almost exactly a year, or 250 episodes of the Everything Electric show and Fully Charged show later, we finally went to see the completed train in action. Today, we're in West Ealing in West London, where the battery electric train is operating on a five mile loop between West Ealing and Greenford. Now, obviously, this train had to make its way from Longmaston to here in West Ealing, and it did it by going 71 miles to Reading, where it then went on the slow charger at the depot there, and still had 55 miles left in the batteries. Now, if Longmaston was all about testing the uh, system, this is all about testing the operations. And there have been a few things that have come to light. Now, all trains have only 3.5 minutes to stop at a station. That is true of every single train in every single station. And that is a design criteria that the battery electric train absolutely had to design to. Now, curiously, the particular top speed on the track between here and Greenford is 40 miles an hour. And diesel trains really, really struggle to get up to that speed. That is not the case for the electric train. It can get up to that 40 miles an hour with no problem at all. And that creates the trouble that it arrives at stations a little bit early, which is good for sealing a little bit of extra time for charging, but not so good for those schedules. 
Now, this train has, can carry 137 passengers, a similar amount standing, and it will be carrying passengers in the next coming months. Quieter, faster and less polluting than their diesel counterparts, there's a lot to love about battery electric trains. But they're not the whole solution. Between fares, branch lines, strikes, the railway industry in the UK is no stranger to controversy. Perhaps that's why it's felt so refreshing to get a glimpse into the positive future of our railways, including finally watching this thing charge. So this diagram here gives you a really good overview of what's going on here. So you can see electricity coming from the grid. You've also got the stationary batteries which are on track side. And then this is how they connect to the train. Now it's really important to note that of course, when it's not charging, those charging rails are earth, which means that if you did touch them, you're certainly not going to get electrocuted. We are very shortly about to approach West Ealing Station, which is very exciting because the shoe gears are going to get deployed and we're going to see this to start charging. Now, very helpfully, I've got all of these different screens in front of me showing all sorts of different information, including right now the current state of charge of both batteries. So they are both at 70%. I've also got on this screen um, an indication of, of range estimation. So say, for example, we weren't going to charge, it would show you how long until we would totally run out of charge. We are arriving at West Ealing, get ready. That's what the message has just said. We're currently, it's currently using 81 kilowatts of power. Now it has taken us 18 months of following this journey to get to this point. So I cannot tell you how exciting this bit is. If you listen carefully, we might be able to hear those shoe gears pop out and attach to those charging rails. It's so silent. There we go, those are the shoe gears. We're getting into position. And the key thing, we'll be watching this one here, which is gonna show us the charging speed. Come on. Fast charging at West Ealing, there we go. So very shortly, we're going to be able to see the speed of the charging. There we go. It is charging at 642 kilowatts. So the one at the front, that's going at 325 kilowatts. The one at the back is going at 318. That is astonishing. Well, I think this demonstration is, is key because the more people in the industry who can see it in action and actually experience it, then the, the more comfortable you are with, with making those decisions. Because realistically, it's a multi-million pound decision and you want to see how reliable it is and how much does this really cost in real life. Battery energy storage on the track site has so much potential with either energy trading, solar, PV, all that stuff. And also seeing how, they, how this particular project gets rolled out, either with similar roller, rolling stock or the same type of rolling stock across other branch lines. Great Western's got loads of branch lines. Why not use it there? You know, it's got a lot of potential to be expanded. Safe to say, this shoot has been rather unusual. We've been dropping in over the past 18 months to capture just a few snapshots of progress. But what we haven't captured is the day in, day out commitment to making things like this reality. I really admire individuals like Julian and organizations like GWR who put their heads above the parapet to shift the needle and do something really impactful that inspires others to follow in their tracks. Let us know what you think in the comments. Please do like and subscribe. And if you have been, thank you for watching.